What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of my On My Mind podcast. This is episode number five, and this one's going to be a little bit different. Today, we're going to be reflecting on something. We're going to be reflecting on my skiing year this year, which is pretty cool. As you can see, I have a skiing shirt on from Palo Vinci. Um, that'll be coming later in the video. Stay tuned for that. But I'm going to be just reflecting on how I did this year, like how I basically how like what runs I did percentage of the terrain like at a basin how many runs did I do this year now in total how many runs have I done what new resorts did I go to and I yes I went to two new resorts this year so in total now I've gone to three but hoping to increase that because that's a goal of mine is to travel at least to get to some new resorts I'm not like snowboarders that travel all around the world go to Japan go to Russia I don't know where else. Europe. And I don't go to Canada. I don't go. I don't go go to this place unless there's like a massive trip. So we'll just get right started. The first day of skiing. So when the ski season kicked off, it kicked off on Thanksgiving. So this is the earliest I've ever skied because usually we'll start skiing around late December. That's when we'll start thinking about going because that's when the terrain is usually open. And Thanksgiving was like, okay, let's hope that maybe something else besides for the day basin, you have um, a, a, like a mid-mountain chairlift, you have a mid-mountain, you have an upper mountain, you have a, because go look up there, terrain map, because you have a backside, you have kind of like a western side bowl, so you have like two-ish bowls, the, side, the bowl on the western side is more trees, and then you have the uh, east wall, that's also part of it. And then you have the top of the mountain. So the top of the mountain, actually, it was opening day for the top of the mountain on Thanksgiving, which was so huge because I didn't want to ski the uh, main front, high noon. I didn't want to ski that because that was basically only one open and the lines would be killer long, even though there's only like a hundred people. The lines could still be outrageous because there's only one lift going. But now th there was two and we could go up to the top of the mountain. It was a little sketchy because it was still icy there were some bare spots there was a cornice it was like a good two three foot drop from one point and but if you, you could drop in you could jump it and then go in or you could just take it around it'd be flat so thanksgiving was basically like two, three hours of skiing like we left at like 9 a.m we got there we like skied from like 10 to 1 and then head back because you're not gonna ski six hours on like two runs you ski however much and because it's thanksgiving you want to get back and just have like a nice meal like four or five o'clock or if you want a regular dinner like seven but however your family does thanksgiving so now we're moving on to day two and four and days two through four so this we ski december 6th the 20th and the 24th 24th was obviously christmas eve so the sixth, our second day, still nothing is open. It's still the top and the bottom, basically top to bottom. A few more runs were open, but still bare. They have not gotten snow. As you know, we had the fires, which limited our moisture. And up there, not a lot, a lot of moisture. Same here in Denver, not a lot of moisture. So the snow conditions were so bare. Snowpack was under two feet, which means there was a lot of rocks, a lot of bare spots icy so it was very sketchy and then the 20th a little bit more snow came so you finally could maybe uh do some more runs i think pally opened either because we went the 20th and the 24th which i think either the 20th or the 24th pally palavinci opened that's when you couldn't do the hard runs but i believe the twin yeah i believe the 20th it opened, but you can only do like the main blue run and then like two blacks were open. It was very limited, but now it allowed three places. Now basically the entire front side of the mountain was open, lift wise. Obviously not all the runs are open. The 24th, Christmas Eve came back. There was a little bit of fresh snow so that the conditions were actually not as like bare and hard. They were actually pretty soft. So I really did enjoy that and not all of us did. So, reflecting on 2020 with the ski year, I didn't ski that much. Like, 
2020 was not a ski year, I will say that. Because if you flash back to season three, I didn't really talk about that, but before COVID, I didn't ski the hard terrain. I skied blacks and under. And the same thing here in 2020, blues and under, the blacks were in open. And most of the blacks were so icy and rocky, you didn't want to do them. Dead serious. Go to the run and you'll see rocks. It's horrible. Like, I really don't, don't know what to say. It's not good. The first part of the year was not good. And continuing for the next three days that week, or sorry, two days that, that week, days five and six, January 10th and the 17th. Those days, it's still the same. No runs have reopened. The beavers were off and on. So that's also like, that's the Western Bowl and a lot better tree skiing. That stuff was off and on because they wanted to get the snow compact so then it's firm and then they get more snow and then they can open it. But obviously they didn't open until late January, which is very late. The earliest they've opened, I think the first year they were open, they opened late November. So, and then Montezuma Bowl usually opens and so the beavers usually in that this December time frame, the mid to early December. It's late January when they opened. So that's not a good sign. Now you can tell the snow year was horrible, but it's about to change. Or conditions wise, because we went to sunlight. We finally got away from A Basin. We finally, for days seven through eight, we it was late January. It was the last three days of January we went skiing. The last day we went to A Basin, and the two days before that were sunlight. So obviously we drove there. We stayed at the Hotel Colorado, which is a very unique hotel. It's like, it's old fashioned, very old fashioned, but it's very comfortable. I will say that. Like, it's not like your modern courtyard Marriott's, your modern sky rises. No, it's not like that. It's old fashioned. If you like old fashioned and old theme, like back in like the 1900s, I think you should give it a shot because there's no heat. Like there's like, I don't know what it's called, but like the heat things are like out. I don't know what it's, is it a furnace? I don't know what it's called. And then like the bathroom is in the center. Like you had to take a step up to the bathroom and step down to the next room. Cause we had two rooms connecting to a bathroom. And it was fine. Like the entire time. Stay there. Cause we got a package, which has allowed us to ski at sunlight. And sunlight, because we got to the hotel at 10 a.m. We went and skied from like 11 a.m. to closing. So kind of explored the resort because we we're going to go back to the next day. And the next day it was supposed to snow. So hopefully the snow conditions will be better. Because they're forecasting two to like four inches, not too much. Just enough to enjoy yourselves. And, well, there was definitely that. Because when you first came there... There were some bare spots, yes. The base was only like two, three feet. About the same as a basin. But the conditions, I feel like, were a little... Because it snowed, and then on some of the harder runs, it was like that compact, hard powder that froze. So it was kind of icy, but on the main runs, it was actually pretty nice. And then, the next day, it snowed like two, three inches in Glenwood. It snowed six to ten at sunlight. Which is like... They... I think they forecast, I think they called for five inches by seven. They got another inch by 8 a.m. So it was about six inches by the time we got there. The parking lot was full. Everyone go. Everyone went to sunlight. And, I, and flash forward a little bit, that storm system made its way to like Beaver Creek, Vail. The next day, they got seven, eight inches. So the system came through and gave them snow, a basin. The following day after the 31st, they got some snow. So that system cycle came through, but we were the first to get it, and we were lucky. The first run we did, I don't think there were six. There might have been a foot. So I think in some spots, due to the fact that it just fell straight down with a little bit of wind out of the uh, north, there was a good 10 inches, I feel like. Maybe a foot, but I'd say good in most spots, six to 10 inches, which was very nice. And it was just, it was deep, so you couldn't really, like that first run was like, powder yeah everyone's like yeah get it but the powder there were still some stashes left at the end of the day but after three four runs basically the powder stashes were just choppy so you had to get up there early 
And if you could just lap, 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 three, four runs, you'd get the powder and then you could dip. But we didn't dip. We basically stayed the entire time. Opening to close. Maybe a little bit before closing. And that was basically it. We skied my best powder day ever. Like the snow conditions were soft. I didn't feel maybe I think one time on one of the runs that some of the powder was like choppy and then you could feel a little ice because it froze, but 99% of the time it was just pow and soft. So that was the first time that I've not heard a crunch in icy conditions in probably a good I don't know a year at least, year plus. Because there hasn't been any powder days. And then he went to A Basin the following day. And yes, we say that Glenwood had the hot springs, did some flips. It was a pretty good time. Ate two large pizzas that were literally this this big. Like they were if you can see me, like like yeah. They were massive. And they were good though. So yeah. So we went to eight base, and that was day number nine already. So day, so we've already skied nine days, and we still have February, March, and April because we don't ski in May. Usually we don't ski in May because it gets slushy and there's a lot of bear. But I want to ski in May, like it is right now, because right now Breck I heard is closing today, a base, and they still got another about two weeks left of their season, hopefully. And Zuma finally opened, finally. It opened. So did the Beavers. Both those areas finally opened. So when those runs opened, it was so icy, so bare. Zuma, I'm not even sure it had a foot of like a good depth. Like, yeah, it was like you had snow. It's just because it's facing south, it just gets beaten with the sun. So you couldn't see any, or sorry, you couldn't like ski because. Like, if you go to, if you ski down Zuma, right here, and you go to the uh, right, you go like this, you go to the right, and then you ski, that's where the rocks were, and that is where it's dangerous, because some people don't know, and they're like, oh, let's just go up on the rocks and drop down. No, don't do that, because you're going to hurt yourself. I didn't, because I knew what I was doing, but not everyone. I'm not going to go into depth about that. But not any, everything was open. It was, it was a slow start to the year. A very, very slow start to this year. Like, you couldn't explain. It was the third worst snow season on record. That's how bad it was. But then everything started to change come February, March, April. Even in early May, things started to change for the next three months. The snow became persistent. The snow finally came... And the base finally got up to the 15-inch mark by March and April. And finally, you could actually ski the entire terrain. Because by February, finally, the entire mountain besides the east wall and the steep gullies. Those things are so close because you have to have a good amount of snow because of how, how rocky they are. But the main terrain, 90% of that terrain, is open. So finally, you could ski Pali, Zuma, Beavers, Lenaway, Black Mountain, like... You could see all of them. And day 10, we could do that. And I believe that was February 10th, I believe. And, oh no, sorry, 15th, sorry. February 15th. So it was the day after Valentine's Day. We had, I don't believe it was a snow day. I think it was just a day off. So we went skiing. Why not? Like, why can't we go skiing? Is there a problem with that? No, there isn't. And I believe... And then day 11 was February 25th. Those days actually had some powder. Two, three inches each day. So you had some soft turns. So you finally had soft turns for once. So it was, the snow conditions were finally starting to get to the winter. Finally, February became good. And then the March. But March, we only skied once. Because of a major snowstorm and basically a blizzard, because there were there were blizzard warnings during this here in Denver, but it snowed up to three feet, up to four feet, up to five, up to six feet in areas. Here in Denver, it was like two to three feet. I would say, I would say, one and a half to two and a half feet of snow, which is a ton of snow, and because it was like 30, 31, 32, 33 degrees, 
the snow is super heavy and it's like you're like lifting so much and and that wrecked our skiing plans because we had skiing plans that basically wrecked our entire march but and then we had a meet over spring break in wisconsin if we didn't have that, we would have probably gone skiing somewhere besides A Basin, by A Basin, somewhere else besides that, maybe Steamboat, I don't know. And then, but before all that crazy wreck happened, March 6th, we went to Breckenridge. So cool, right? Yeah, it was warm. I think it got to like 50 degrees in the morning. It was like 20, 30 degrees. A little chilly. And but it was sunny. It was beautiful. I thought it was supposed to be cloudy. It was gorgeous sun, and then the clouds finally came during the afternoon, but it was slushy at the end of the day. The turns were amazing, and yeah, I think the first first or second, yeah, the first run I did, I was doing being dumb, and like, because a lot of the times if I'll do this, I'll kind of like do like a and, car, and put my edges into the snow, and I caught a groomer edge, because at Vail Resorts, they make sure their groomers are to perfection. And I caught a groomer and went, woo, caught an edge and fell down. So that was a great start. But, and then the lines, it was like, I think I had to wait at max 15, 20 minutes. But then some of the lines, you could just keep going. Peak six, you ski that two times. That line was like 10, 15 minutes. Like the lines were absurd because it was a Sunday and it was like the first week of spring break for some. So, not for us, anyway. What else? Besides Brick has the highest lift ever in the United States, in North America. Almost 13,000 feet. I went up there. I said I wanted to go up there right from the get-go. And I did. My dad and I went up there. We did three runs. Amazing. We did Imperial Ridge down to the side of Imperial. Because Imperial, it's a bowl sits like this. Kind of. It kind of flattens out here. But the bowl is sitting here. We did the ridge into the bowl. I fell, but I made it down. The second time, we actually did the entirety of the bowl. That was pretty fun. And the third time, we did the ridge. Did, did the ridge to a narrow, gnarly chute. I wouldn't call it a major chute, but it was a steep pitch. It was called the boundary chutes off of the uh, horseshoe bowl and you take the so because I took the t-bar for the first time and that was oh my goodness my legs are killing me because we stopped like four bars from the top and you're literally sitting like so here's the ground you're sitting at a pitch like this and your legs are trying to hang on because if you fall down you can't get back on unless there's an empty t-bar which they're not going to allow you to do so but I didn't fall. And that's how we got to Imperial. And. Wreck was fun, I guess. Because we skied peak seven. Or peaks six, seven, eight. I think I skied all of peak seven. I skied probably a third of peak six. And probably only an eighth of peak eight. Because peak eight is massive. And we didn't ski peak nine or ten. Because nine is just beginner terrain. Ten you have to do all the way over there, and if you're over there, you stay there and do blacks the entire time, which I didn't want to do. I wanted to have the blues, the blacks, and the double blacks at the same time, and that's what I did. Because Breck, a lot of their terrain is peaks eight and over, and then peaks seven and six is a lot more intermediate terrain, but eh, it worked. But the views from top of peaks six, seven, eight were gorgeous. I couldn't explain how Breck was that beautiful. I didn't even think it was going to break. I had no expectations at all that I was going to break. It was beautiful. Man, I feel my throat hurts from all this. Yeah, and the lines were long. I already said that. And the groomers were good. In the morning, I have never seen groomers that good. I just practiced carving and turning in my skis. So now we took like a month break. And we only went skiing two more times after that. And it was April 4th and April 14th. So. I don't know what to say because then that. I did. The 
the actual Pally Main Street. If you saw that video, go check it out. I'll try to link it right here. But uh, I skied it for the first time. And then I skied it again the following. So if you want to see that video, check it out right here. I'll try to put one of them or both. Just be careful there. And then the, the April 4th, that was just... I went with every, our entire family went, which was pretty nice, I think. And the last day I went, that was on like a Wednesday because I wanted to go so bad. They were forecasting 68 inches. They got two inches, you big freaking liars. It was only two inches. So the beavers, they actually had some good snow. It was sticky snow, but they had two inches of powder. That was nice. But then if you saw my the montage of the Skiing the Beavers video. Hopefully I can put it right here or here or wherever it is. The moguls on the one run I did filled in. So there's a snow filled mogul and then the icy moguls on top, not fun. Sticky two inches of powder, not fun. And I, that last day I skied Beavers, Zuma, East Wall Traverse, finally that opened for the last two days I went. Lenaway, and Palavinci. I skied all the in the same day. In those last two days, I skied all of them. And the last day, I skied all of them. So it was a very intense last two days of the, se of the season. I wanted to push myself so hard. And I wanted to get my adrenaline running. And I could finish the runs, which I did. And I'm so happy that I did. And now the season has come to an end. It's sad that the season comes to an end like this but I rent skis guys I give me hate I don't really care I rent skis because I'm still I have not done growing I'm like 5'8 I'm not done growing so I'm not going to get a pair of skis until I'm probably 5'10 five, 5'11 five, and then by the time that reaches I can get a pair of skis which won't be for like a year or two so and then I find my own skis and then by the time I can drive I'll drive myself in May with my car, and I'll go skiing in May. I'll go skiing opening day A-Base, and I'll go ski opening day, or closing day A-Base, because that's our season pass. Because I have a car when I'm 16. Well, 16 and a half. I'll just have to learn how to drive the mountains, but June 6th, it's not going to be that bad. Opening day, not that bad. Middle of the winter, that's going to be horrible. So to finish this off, how many runs did I do this year in total? So at A-Base in this year, I did 53 total runs, which is 36% of their terrain. And now in total at A-Basin, I have done 61 out of 145 of their runs, which is about 42% of their terrain, because most of it is double blacks, and I've not done all of them. So Breckenridge, I did 12%. I did 24 out of 191 runs. I did about 12%, so that's lower percentage, but... If I had gone there for another two weeks, if I did their two-week trip, I could probably get all done. I could ski peak 10 all at once. I could ski peak 9 all at once. I could ski peak 8 all at once. Ski peak 7 all at once. And ski peak 6 all at once. Probably peak 6, 7, and 8 would be a two-day thing because they're so huge. Peak 9 and 10, they don't have bowls. So that those would be a one-day a one day thing. So that's two days, three, four, five, six, seven. So like that, it could take you a good week to get all the terrain done at wreck. And then at Sunlight, we did about, exactly about 25% of their terrain. We did about 18 out of the 72 runs. Obviously, this isn't accurate. This might be false, but it's from my knowledge, from my me memorization of what I did. So in total, if I add up, that's, what, 42, that's 103. So I did 103 ski runs this year out of 14 days. So let's ask... 103 divided by 14. The answer is about 7.3571. I can't. You can't really see it. It's backwards, but 7 point. So about, I did about 7 and a half ish, about 7 and one third runs every time I went. So that's really good. Because sometimes at A base and you do the same runs over and over again. So that's basically it. I really don't uh, to say, but the North Pole at A base. Uh, Maybe sent on the east wall. 
could that happen next year? Because it's the easiest on the east wall. It's a probably like a half an hour hike. Because the east wall is sitting here. You have the pole. You have to hike up. And then it's flat. And you hike up. And then you go down. And then you hike up again. But it, it's the easiest part. Could I do that ne next year? The north pole out of the east wall. Say I've done the east wall. Maybe. New resorts. I don't know. Stay tuned for the season 5 video coming in the fall. Peace out, guys.